Welcome in to Crime Time Buzz. I'm Jay, your host. I've been going through various interviews about Sebastian Rogers' disappearance, and I've been gathering bits and pieces about the doors, locks, garage doors, access to the house. And when you put it all together, there's an obvious answer to the who part of this mysterious disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. Allegedly, of course. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoy the content. Thank you so much. This is for entertainment purposes only. All content is speculative, opinion, and theory, and not to be taken as fact. So let's get started with the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. 117 days ago in Hendersonville, Tennessee, he allegedly disappeared in the dark of night, walking out of the house himself. He was reported missing on February 26. He is 15, autistic, wears glasses, and has brown hair and brown eyes. Law enforcement has said there is no evidence that Sebastian left the house on his own, walked away. So let's go over what we do know about the entries and exits to the house. All this information is from the Proudfoots themselves in various interviews. They lock all the doors that provide access to the house at night, and they were locked the night of Sunday, February 25th. All doors were locked when Katie Proudfoot awakened Monday, February 26th in the morning to find Sebastian was missing. The front door and the man door on the garage have code pad locks. Sebastian knows the codes. These are the doors he uses. The overhead garage doors are electric and require remote clickers. The back doors require a key to lock. Sebastian does not have a key. Going through a window, there are bushes and mulch, and as Chris Proudfoot put it in one video, we would have heard something. So going through a window wasn't an option, and there's no signs of breaking and entering. This is all important. He's not in the house. There's no evidence of him leaving. So in my opinion, he had to be carried out to a waiting car, perhaps the 3 a.m. car that hid in the shadows for three to five minutes and then locking the house back up so a key or a code is needed or drove him out through the garage a clicker is needed so in my opinion the answer of who allegedly took sebastian out of the house is someone who had access to the house to unlock and lock the doors a code a key or a clicker and that is a very small list of individuals and we know this because on Nancy Grace, Katie Proudfoot explains who that list includes. Nancy Grace asked if only immediate family have keys to the house. Katie Proudfoot answered yes. That really narrows it down, doesn't it? A small list. So we know only immediate family have access to the house to lock and unlock doors at the house. We don't know if Katie Proudfoot means just her and Chris Proudfoot, as her immediate family, or if it includes family in the area who may have a key code or clicker. Only immediate family has access to the locked house and the ability to relock it, and that narrows down the who, in my opinion. What do you think? What if the plan was to say he walked away, locked the coded front door behind him on his way out, thinking the focus would stay away from the house looking for a runaway teen, and then it backfired, and law enforcement said there was no evidence that he walked away from the home on his own. And then who has access to the house becomes very important. Big flaw. Thanks for being here. Please, please subscribe to the channel. Come on back and call 1-800-TBI-FIND with information about the disappearance and or location of Sebastian Rogers. Talk soon, friends.